Next, uh, let's get into what Charles Taylor has to say about the emerging culture of authenticity. And he gets it's really interesting. I highly recommend you buy the book and and his uh, his other works too to get a much much more detailed, much intricate intricate look in, into how this stuff is built up to the history of thought. But he traces it down to the convergence generally. Although there's much more to it than this, of two big moral ideals have combined to create the emerging ideal of authenticity in our culture, and he kind of locates them somewhere along the lines of these two. Number one, uh, people have a moral duty to gain a con contact with their own inner nature, and this means avoiding conformity, social pressure, and avoiding an instrumental stance to themselves. Number two, people have a uh, kind of a duty to find their own voice because everyone's own voice has something unique to say and no model really exists outside of myself this is something I have to generate myself uh, if you get both these together you're kind of an authentic person is how this is this storm starts brewing anyway All right, and uh, let's kinda bring it to something more real so we had a bunch of videos in the playlist and a lot of these people uh, had kind of boiled down authenticity to kind of something like look inside, see how you feel, and just go with that. That's you. Um, so if you're feeling, if somebody's in front of you, you're in a bank line and somebody budges in front of you and you feel angry, uh, the authentic you is the one who yells at the guy budging in line. Uh, if you stay quiet because you, you don't want to you know, interrupt everyone's nice peaceful day, you're being fake. Um, or if there's something you've always wanted to do but you avoided doing it because you felt embarrassed, embarrassed uh, the real you is the you that wants to do it and the real you would be the one who actually goes and does it. Okay, um, it, kind, it kind of boils down to what, is, what do you feel, really, really feel you want to do now? So get in touch with that. So okay, ta uh, Taylor wants to attack something like this point and he wants to say that this is something that is misguided it's an attempt at authenticity but it's it's a self-defeating attempt at authenticity and he says um, something like defining yourself so in other words what these people want to say is the true you is the you that's feeling X and XYZ feeling that's the true you. In other words, that's the you, that's what's defining you. So Taylor says that uh, defining oneself is kind of based on finding what is significant in your difference from others. Um, so it has to be an important difference. So you can't just claim that I that what's really individual, what's really unique about me. He says, for example, is is having three thousand seven hundred thirty-two hairs on my head or something. Um, that would be almost that would be almost in ununderstandable unless you added a side story about, you know, something. For example, maybe you live in a culture where that's the special number of God and you link it up with the sacred. So having a certain number of hairs on your head, having I don't know, having being the Bahamut Batman and having, you know, fifty million little zippers and pockets, that's not in, that's not really What's significant? It has to be something that has significance, and that's what you can claim as your identity. Um, so he, I guess, to break, make it real, real, he says something along the lines of one of the one of the videos. There was a woman who wanted to wear a bunny suit. Um, all of her life, she wanted to wear a bunny suit, Easter bunny suit, and give candies to children. Um, and she met some woman at some authenticity conference, and the woman said, you got to be authentic. So they parted ways, and later she met up. She's like, oh, did you wear the bunny suit? And she said, yes, I wore the bunny suit. It was wonderful. But I guess the thing is, it, being wearing a bunny suit can't be what identifies you as different from others. Wearing the bunny suit or even wanting to wear the bunny suit is not significantly define you in contrast to others. This woman, this old woman, would have to connect to something larger. She would have to connect it as, I don't know, something, like a rebellion against the social pressures that have held her down for so long, or 
uh, a way to spread happiness and joy to children which she ended up giving tons of candy to children or a way of spreading dreams to children or giving them hope for the future but wearing the bunny suit alone is not enough so you get a lot of people in this culture of authenticity who say something like well that's just her choice you can't really criticize her if she wanted to wear a bunny suit or she wanted to wear a crab suit or if she wanted to sit and eat peanut butter sandwiches that's her authentic choice you really can't criticize that and Taylor wants to say yes you can uh, you can criticize it because these activities need to have a deeper meaning. Otherwise, there would be not be significant choices for your identity. I mean, her wearing the bunny suit alone is not enough. And because she needs to connect it with something like giving joy to children, giving hope to children, she can be wrong about that. Um, maybe the bunny suit's really freaky, and it gives the children nightmares, right? She can be wrong, right? Uh, she can be wrong about what is really significant in her life or how to approach what is significant in her life, the method of getting there. She can make a mistake on that. So this is uh, poorly, poorly explained. Definitely read the book. A very general thrust of his attack on somebody like this. And up to this point, do you guys have anything to say? No, but I just I guess that ties in with his point that he's trying to make is that this like one of the things I think he feels is wrong about wrong headed about authenticity is it can't be reasoned out. These people that say, No, this is just me and I I contain all the choices and values inside me and me alone and that's it, goodbye. There's mm -hmm. nothing to be talked about and I don't know. I really th I like this idea that it, it, you yourself aren't even realizing the ideal of authenticity, and there's a way to even kind of crystallize it in your mind to bring it more to the forefront, right? I mean, there's a way you can fall short of the, even your own, even the moral standard that I think he's implying that we all kind of already buy into, right? We all have it in, in us, and it's not as if we're reasoning from the ground up, like he says, I like that. We're like, we're not starting from zero here. Um, we're reasoning people who already have this idea of what authenticity is. Mm -hmm. um, that's why this can work, right? I mean, these, these people already kind of have to recognize this, and they already do. I mean, I would never claim to be special because I'm closest to Family Mart or a convenience store. I mean, if I did, it would be crazy, and, and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even think to do it. It would be weird to do, um, right? I mean, when rappers claim to come from a bad neighborhood, it's, it's not because bad neighborhoods are good, per se. They're talking about how tough they are, and toughness is a virtue, right? But they didn't determine that toughness was a virtue. Um, yeah, these are all kind of linked to reason and ration, rational states. So. Yes. Yeah, we're, try, we're trying to bring back reason. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even for the, you know, we're, we're talking about these, how the choices and the preferences you have, that makes, you know, they have to have some sort of context, like some sort of significance to make them mean anything. And I think it was most telling when you talked about, you know, sexual orientation. Ah, you know, people, well, you know, whether, you know, you identify yourself as you know heterosexual, homosexual, sure, um, transsexual, sure, well, asexual, whatever, or is a very significant choice. It's it's, it's a very significant de defining thing, factor of your identity, and the reason why is because our you know culturally they, we place so much significance on this choice. Like, it would be theoretically possible for your sexual preference to be on level with your your music preference. Yeah. You know, and in this, if this was true, it would be insane for somebody to identify themselves as a classic music liker or in the same manner that we identify ourselves. So, you know, somebody would identify themselves as a homosexual or as gay in our current society. I, when I read that, I was always thinking, like, is this kind of a mistake Republicans are making? Is they don't consider that having significance, mm. right? They consider, like, basically, oh, you chose to be gay because you have this, like, victim complex. You just want to be liked or something. Like, it's not an essential part of you. That's not really what's going on, right? So that's mm. why we can ban people being gay because that's not – that's not – that's a bad thing, and that's why it's an essential part of who you are, right? That's a sin, right? Something has to be eliminated. So in their world, it's not in the realm of significance, right? Or maybe it's negatively significant, though, yeah. I think. They do want to prevent it. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's got a, a significance it's just in a bad way. Yeah. Though. It's still got that horizon. It's got that, that yeah. 
cultural significance attached to it, it's just not good significance to so, the people who hold these views. All right, and uh, I love Taylor's uh, attack on, on this kind of thinking, like, well, it's just their choice, so you should let them do it. I mean, this is what these a lot of these people who try to advocate for authenticity, and they don't do it very well, uh, or at least according to Taylor, they don't, they don't do it very well. This is what they come on and say, well, what are you talking about? That's, that's their life. That's their life. And they get to lead that life however they feel. They should lead that life. They're free to do that. Don't you dare tell them what they should be doing or how they should be living. Um, and that's their free choice to do. Right? So don't, you don't have a say in that. Um, and Taylor kind of wants to say, these people who step in are also, these people are being, these people are undermining their own cause when they say something like this. And that uh, the fact that there is a choice to be made means that there is a prior level of significance that we need to tap in like to something along the lines of human fulfillment. Um, we should allow, we should say this is okay because this leads to a fulfilling human life. Not, not being able to express that would lead to a damaged human life. Exactly, right. We should be saying something like this, not just, well, that's just their choice. What are you going to do about it? Mm. Uh, which is kind of what a lot of these guys jump in and say. Like, oh, don't you dare. That's how they, that's what they chose, so you can't say anything about that. Never. I mean, like, he did admit you, you could make that argument in a warped way, though. You yeah. could say, like, we should value the fact that we live in a society where people are given free realm to do things. Yeah. Right, that that's the kind of society we value. A government, a, a society that has an open system. That's why we don't have to care, right? I mean, you could twist this argument to make it like part of a political virtue, right? The political virtue of kind of a, a liberal, capital L, liberal kind of um, virtue. You could try. I mean, he kind of suggested the same thing in the end. Mm. So, okay, what I want to do is this. For just for the moment, I want to take on the persona of one of these these people. Nope. These uh, Here we go. okay, I want to take on one of these the persona of one of these people who say like, no, 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 it's their free choice, uh, and you can you don't have anything to say about it. And so let's imagine I'm this guy, and I say to Taylor, uh, well, you said that you know this is wrong. You shouldn't say this because uh, you shouldn't say that. For example, being gay is just as valid as being straight because that's just the person's free choice. Uh, you shouldn't say things like this because this is self-defeating. What if I just come back and say something like this? Why not? Uh, let's just do. Let's just take the whole system down. Let's eliminate all of it and say it's all just preferences. Like it's almost. It is like pizza and pasta. Some people like men. Some people like women. Uh, and that's it. It's it's just on the, it's on the level of pizza and pasta. Good. Let's eliminate that as as a something as a choice of significance, and we'll let anyone to do whatever they feel like doing, just like we let anyone choose whatever they want to feel they eat, eat for dinner. Well, that would rob <clears throat> these people who do choose to identify themselves in this way. Would it would rob them of significance? of the significance they find in that decision. Jenna is one thing you'd say. Okay? You know, if, or of course the reverse is tr true. And, uh, either all decisions would become uh, um, insignificant or all the decisions would become overly significant. You know, we'd, we'd go to one or two of the extremes, in which case is, it would be almost impossible to forge an identity for yourself. Uh, I'm going to continue my persona here, but I'm liking what you're saying. I was going to say, yeah, we, we, we shouldn't do that anymore. Like, we should just let people totally be free there. Um, so it shouldn't be important that uh, you're gay or straight. Uh, it should be about the same level as pizza or pasta, and nobody should. that shouldn't be anybody's business but your own. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. Maybe this sounds crazy. It's just an initial thought I would have would be, um, I don't know. It sounds like almost like you're. In, it's a dangerous because you're playing into like Republican hands. Like I mean, I mean, if 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 because that society could never happen where you allowed people to do anything they wanted to, right? I mean, you can't kill somebody, you can't steal things. Um, so what I mean, like if it was the same as choosing pizza or pasta, then why not ban it or not be able to ban it? I mean, it's just it's just another minor decision. Who cares, right? You don't you can't get drugs. So if if it's just another choice, another meaningless choice. Well, who cares then, right? Okay, you ban that, no biggie. But it's just the same as banning, I don't know, 
jaywalking. So, no biggie. Uh, yeah. Exactly. It would open doors for homosexuality to be banned. Exactly. Oh, great. Wonderful. Thank you. This is kind of the conclusion I arrived at. I was sitting here. I wrote that sentence in my paper, and I was kind of... That's kind of where I took this, and I was, I'm happy you guys did, too. In other words, like, me demanding that these people be able to be free to make a choice, but then, on the other hand, saying that choice is insignificant. These, these, are undermi these two things are undermining each other, right? And what would be my argument if they would just come back, if a Republican would just come back and say, well, psh, if it doesn't matter, if it's pizza or pasta... What are you making a big fuss about? Let's ban it. But it does matter. That's why I'm protesting. right? It does matter a lot. Right. So, okay, great. Oh, thank you. Great. That's, that's how I would go. I mean, but I guess that, that, that actually requires a society that would kind of have a dialogue about what it means to have a fulfilled life. Yeah. And I don't know. It feels like these authenticity people, they don't want to do that. Yeah. They don't want to talk about what a fulfilled life is because they kind of are afraid of that. Yeah. Now, once you start defining what a fulfilled life is, is you run the risk of your own life not matching the definition. Yeah. Or or you kind of like saying someone else isn't living a good life or something, and people are afraid of doing that too. Yeah. Right. So let's not talk about the good life, right? Let's just not talk about that because I don't want to judge these people. Hmm. And it, yeah, at least on some real scary roads. I mean, people could be more fulfilled. They could be more fulfilled if they thought about this stuff more too, though. And, but just by silencing the whole thing, mm. uh, it leads people to leave lives of frustration. I think. Also, yeah. Yeah, I think. I, oh, please. Sorry, I'm just gonna say by making it. We don't sit down. We don't talk about. Uh, we don't talk in. You know, detail about whether I'm going to have pizza or pasta uh, tonight. All right. All right, we talk about things that are significant choices. If no choices are significant or all, or all choices are equally significant, they mean the exact same th thing, more or less, as what, what would we talk about? We could seriously sit here for you know, two hours and talk about whether I'm going to have pizza or pasta tonight. You know, I mean, like, I don't want to sound too cynical like an old man here, but, I mean, I think not talking about it actually does lend to the slide to subjectivism, and, it, and that it ends up being that way, right? People start just endlessly talking jibber-jabber about nothing, right? Blah, 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 uh, because they don't pick out the right things to talk about. They don't focus on the right things. I'm sorry if this sounds arrogant. Did you know uh, that in Portuguese... We, we sometimes will, will slam gambe on the end of a sentence. Oh, wow, that's, that's very relevant. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I'm sounding all like Plato here, but anyway. All right. <laughs> Plato, Plato. Anyway. Oh. Well, that's just a... God, some of these air conditioners is up... Up high enough, I thought that you properly did the inception sound effects. Oh no, there's a plane. There's, there's an oh, American shit. military fly, plane flying over my head right now. Because okay, I was where I live is right in the drop sound effect guy. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I it, it was the plane. Thank you, plane, plane, for doing Justin's job. <laughs> <laughs> the plane's keeping me real. Okay. <laughs> that was an authentic plane noise, by the way. <laughs> an authentic American military plane flying overhead. Excellent. <laughs> all right, but I think that's all we need. All we want to talk about for now on this yeah. one. Cool. All right, let's wrap this one up with right. the uh, American military. All right, Thank see you, you next uh, next one. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs>